about is peanut yeah, butter turkey, so, right? You know, I mean, yeah. come on. I mean, look. So if we bring it in next Monday, it's still okay. <laughs> it is still fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So peanut butter challenge. And you all know very well. Very few days. Are small dogs better? Big doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Once it's peanut butter. Peanut butter. We don't care. And we're bringing it in right now. Whatever. You can bring it in whenever you want to, up until the thirty first. Okay. Just bring it in and take it upstairs. They have a yeah. So far, they do not have a grocery cart full. No, we don't. Because we, I, we didn't, I, we yeah, didn't we get it out. <clears throat> okay. That's the end of this meeting. Well yes. done. Well oh, done. Hey, great and job, y'all. Now, Nikki is going to give us a, a thing on a Tom very hard lecture on Tom. 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 And the nice thing is, is that Charlie suggested it. I thought it was a great idea. And I was going to do it, but I didn't get the PowerPoint program. In. And besides, it's better to have her do it. Look here, y'all. We've got because now, if anybody asks you, if we have an official. Our horticulture agent said, and you all have some publications there with you as well on, on the right here on pollinating and the and the fertilizer. All right, so let's talk about palms in general. Let's do that. And um. You all are going to notice that there is a difference in the size because I legit pulled this out of the modules that we use to teach you all palms for Master Gardener training. Okay. And I think that this is really a great time of the year for you all to get this as a refresher. So this is going to be fantastic. So let's talk about palms. Stop. Um, <laughs> let me hit this green so that my clicker will work. Or not. Um, Yeah, an hour for education, an hour for the meeting. I don't care if the meeting's five minutes and education is five minutes. You still get an hour and an hour. Okay. So palms are different. We know that, right? Um, they are a monocot, which means they're relative to grasses. Um, one of the relative to professors for um, palms that retired a couple of years ago said that palms, if you look at them, they're like they're grasses with a trunk and a canopy, so they're grass trees. Right, their grass is in tree form. Um, they have one growth point. They have unique nutritional needs. They do grow slowly, and that is because of their complicated system. Right, they're difficult to propagate unless it's the queen palms in my yard. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, them yeah. and and the and the foxtail. Oh no, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Listen. My sable does not care about me ever having another sable. I was gonna. But those no, no, those no. queens and the foxtail. But let, let me just say it now. If anybody in this room wants a sable palm, I have got poodles of the babies. Let me know. There we go. I dug them up because they don't do well when I pull them out of my ground. You got to dig them off. deep. You got to go right. Yeah, you got to get their cap. You got to get their cap. Yeah. Okay. Uh -oh. And Florida State tree yeah. is a palm. It's a sable palm. It's a sable palm, right? All right. So let's talk about the anatomy of palms. Now, this is where in class you all would have gotten a handout for you all to. Put this in the diagram yourselves. We're not going to be that ridiculous with you today. So there is a crown, and I love the fact that we use the royal for this. So there is a crown, there is a crown <laughs> shaft. This has a trunk, right? And then this one here just has a crown, no crown shaft, and trunk, right? So, so here's the thing they're both palms. It doesn't matter that they don't have the exact same parts because apparently whoever created these liked variety, right? Not, it's not a lot of them have the crown right. shaft. So then there are palming leaves, there are costa palming leaves, oh, and then God. there are also pinnate leaves. Very good. And these are all things that we use to identify palm trees, right? I had to figure out the difference between a pot of majesty palm versus whatever name it was the homeowner thought that they were. Was the homeowner's heart. Um, the good thing was that the homeowner was smart enough not to argue with me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just because <laughs> of the leaf base and the sheath, and the fact that one of them had um, crocus and the other didn't. 
so it couldn't have been what they thought it was. Um, and it made a difference in that palm tree's care. Right? One of them is actually more suited to the indoor use than the other. All right, so single trunk versus multi trunk. Easy to kill, hard to get rid of. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all, follow, oh, yeah. follow me for more ways to describe palm trees, right? <laughs> I like that. So, <laughs> All right. Tried. So then the thing with that is. This also makes a difference in how we explain care, how we explain to people what the right oh, way It is yeah. Lady Palm, right? Yeah. It, it, it's also going to make a difference in how we tell people to place these plants. Mm -hmm. If this does not have a place to run around and grow, that's not the right thing for that plant. Put it in a pot. Yes, you can put it in a pot. And it Lovely. does very well in a pot, right? It does very well. But this one here, no, not so well. I mean, if it's your least favorite neighbor and they know you're a master gardener and you just don't care about their life and their situation, by all means, pop that. One. Yeah. Sit back and laugh and give our program a really bad name. Yeah, you need I'm, to I'm with it. Patio pot. Right. So planting and transplanting palm trees. This is where a lot of things happen to go wrong, right? But we already know how to do transplanting of trees in general. So the transplanting of palm trees is not that much different from the transplanting of most other trees. You don't want to put it below the level that it was already com comfortable growing in, right? We know that part. Water daily for 30 days, this, that, and the tenth, depending on the size of the plant. We know that part as well. I love the fact that they made sure to say never drive a nail into the palm trunk because when they do stake these up there were lots and lots of companies that were driving right into these precious little trees and then I love the way that the workers would work them out of the tree <laughs> no and when and then when you go there you see this hole into this palm you're like was this brace for something you're like oh a couple years ago it was yeah well, how did you know? Uh, because this is the source of your of your difficulty. You all told this tree you didn't want it as soon as you put it in. All right. Yeah. Do bugs get in there? Oh, all sorts of things. It creates a wound, which creates an opportunity for anything to go into that wound, and you're inserting it directly into the system, the delicate system of a palm tree, right? Because if you want to. Get rid of a palm. I mean, drill a hole in it. Yeah. Add a little yuck. It'll die yeah. right back. Yeah. Or, or you can just take it the easy way, like me, and just go employ a chainsaw and go. Shh. Well. I um, mean. Yeah. So you in know, the city, you have to have a permit to remove oh, any, any non-invasive tree. It's more, uh, yes. yes. And then you have to replace it. Three inches di in diameter and right. in height. Right. Uh, right. Uh, right. Uh, right. I called the city. Right, in the city. In the city. In your yard. All right, so let's talk about environmental disorder on your palm trees because you all are going to have to kill who think that, that they have been cursed. Um, a destructive physical occurrence um, to plants are usually what you would characterize environmental disorders to be, right? Lightning strike. Yeah. That's what those two and previous pictures were of. Yeah. Well, and eventually, the front will stay on. And a sudden collapse of the of the crown. This was not something that it started to send you warnings, right? It was two days ago there was a thunderstorm, and today your palm tree looks like holy hell. That's what this is, right? And they turn brown and they always stay on. Oh, yeah, they're going to hang in there. <laughs> they're not going anywhere. Bad analogy. Um, Free damage. They appear within a few days, right? Hard freezes to the canopy. It's going to dry out and it's going to smell a lot like hay. I'm not sniffing frozen canopies, y'all. <laughs> not doing it. Yeah, um, it can good, lead to secondary blood rot, which means. The crown has already been frozen, and all of that plant soup is just in there, and it is just going to rot. 
Because what else would it do? This is carbohydrates that are not going anywhere, and so something has to come and eat it. Yes, that field trip on the river where the lady covered her royal palm yes. with sheets all yes. the way down. Yes, got to love it. Ooh. Got to love it. Yes, and she had many of them. Oh, right, right. And um, don't necessarily give up if there is some freeze damage, but severe freeze damage, yeah. Cut your losses while you can, especially since if this plant is proximate to a building of any value, it can possibly just go and say, I will tumble down now. Do you get a permit then? No, no, no. Okay. You don't need a permit you for that need sort of thing. To take that. All right, foliar salt damage. Okay. From the hurricane. Right. So a lot of times when we have a storm event, when we have a wind event, that wind event is bringing salt air inward, right? This is what you would typically see. All right. Um, and that's happening now. One of the most important factors is during dry periods. It's not necessarily just a rain event with salt that you have to be so concerned about. It's when that salt is allowed to sit there and bake into the leaves that it's a problem. Okay? Does it right. kill them or will they come back? No, it'll oh, like it'll come back. But it's good to know that that's not a nutritional deficiency, right? Yeah. Um, it's just it's good to be able to identify it as, oh, okay, you've got a strong wind coming. Um, you should, if there's still some green to it, yes. If there's not green to it, then they can be removed safely. Yes. Yeah. All right. Excessive water intake. See how the trunk is splitting and whatnot. Excessive rain lots of irrigation, and a lot of times that is a combination of both. Got to love it. Um, those irrigation systems that are automatically coming on. And has a drain. And, and it doesn't. And has a, a little. Right there, at it. Right there. there During the, the, before Ian bowl. came, I put on Facebook, turn off your irrigation system. Right. Because right. you do not want it coming on the week right. after. You already have too much water. Right. And that was the same thing that, I, that I talked so about on, yeah. on the radio spot before um, well, Ian came. I was like, folks, save some water and save your turf grass. Yeah, if it's going to become inundated turn. by the storm, surely you don't need your irrigation exacerbating that issue. Since all right. the city. Yeah. You know, city and the I only work for these people. They pay me good money to know what I know and not to listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... And, and and I look at and, and I I tell I tell the people who are truly in charge with the power to do things I look at them and I'm like anytime you want to do better holler <laughs> anytime y'all want to save some money I'm upstairs I am very frugal <laughs> and 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 I'm practical as well right Christine um, used to find visual systems should be palm. sufficient to diagnose this. Christine and Violet have been out there hugging oh. those palm trees that are getting abused on a regular basis. Yeah. And they don't really care. No, they don't. So they get paid you want to pay me and pay them, who am I to argue with you except that I'm a taxpayer and I should, right? And beat your head against the wall. Look here, girl. I've got other things to do with my life. And I'm living my very best life these days. All right. So electromagnetic fields within two to five feet of a high voltage power line appear to cause injury to palm foliage. We always have to say up here too, because child, we can't get sued by FCNL and GT and all them other people. What about yes. business lights up the palm tree? And no, that's a different story altogether. Okay. Um, because that's not creating an electromagnetic field more than it is just shedding light and giving it warmth. So you can totally put Christmas lights all up and down your Eureka. You don't have to be an issue. No, no, no. And the best thing about that is I wouldn't recommend LEDs because those burn cooler. And during cold People times, want you want the ones that are burning hot on your plants outside. So if you're if you're not concerned about the energy efficiency of your twinkle apps, by all means, please employ the ones that will burn hot. They will keep your plants that are cold tender a little bit warmer. That's just that slight little degree of difference is going to make a huge difference for your plant. Um, wind burn. Oh, yeah. oh, we got some of that. Yes. Yes. We have a lot of plants that are looking like that. Yeah. And, um, you know, 
When when I get the the Oh my god, you should see all of the trees in our neighborhood. They're just terrible looking. I'm like, y'all, we just went through like we just got side swiped by a mega hurricane. Crazy, calm down. Just just let it be for a couple of months. But we've got guests coming, darling. <laughs> you have a house to invite guests into. Let us really have a real Thanksgiving that we pretend to have every November. Let us truly do the Thanksgiving thing. And I'm not saying it from a position of being judgmental. I'm saying it from a practical position of go buy you a really, really awesome organic double kosher turkey somewhere. Stop arguing with your trees. We've all been through some things. It's just going to look like that for a while, right? Um, so, y'all. So, I, I am. But there are just times when I've had enough of human beings being human. And I just can't find any other diplomatic way to say, please do not bother me with not only your first world, but your 1% of the first world problem. Like, sis, your trees are going to look horrible for a few months, and I'm not going to encourage you to cut off what is still green foliage. Well, it will help us. Because you don't like the way it looks. It's going to look worse than that. If you no, got it, oh, yes. Really so you know, stop arguing with me. And if you're gonna go and, and murder it, don't call me for the sign off. It's not happening. I will. I will say administered against horticulture agents advice. Yeah. Like there's AMA. There is also against environmental horticulture agents advice. AHA. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? You got it. So yes. Um. Sunburn. <laughs> I have a good little case of sunburn I'm currently working on. It's fun. Um, large necrotic areas are visible on the upper surfaces of leaves. And they're usually in the center because that's like where the sun is burning on those leaves the most. So when you see this, it is easy for people to look at you and say, I've got insect damage. I've got this, that, and intense damage. All right, ma'am, calm down a wee bit. Just bring it down a little bit. You're in the sunshine <laughs> this is normal this is normal okay and especially if it is a plant that is not used to or it should not be yeah in the patio right right sunlight. so so let's make sure that they have the right plant in the right place because you know a lot of our sables um our royals our foxtails etc they don't get that kind of damage, right? No, because they're out. They don't, right, they're because they're outside. supposed to be in full sun. So let's make sure that this is not a plant that was either not acclimated to the new spot or should not be in that sunshiny spot to begin with. Water stress. The oldest leaves that are usually the ones to show the symptoms, simply because those are going to be the ones that are going to become desiccated and sacrificed for the newer stems that are still in the crown, right? That's not a nutrient deficiency. That's also not the landscaper spraying something funky in that area. That's water stress. Plant is thirsty. Give it a drink. Planting depth. If you see the trunk shriveling, um, poor soil aeration. So if the soil does not have enough give to it for the plant to do what it's supposed to do, then you're going to have a problem. Drought. It will not affect the structural strength of the palm trunk, but it will definitely cause other issues with the plant. Um, that plant was planted too shallow because they had it on its tiptoes and it's not that arena. Okay. Um, Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> the uniformity is a clue. Yes? Um, when I was reviewing this last night, I laughed because there is still a hotel and um, a location in Cayman called Royal Palm. And they had a long driveway. Majestic was Royal. I mean, it is stunning to look at. It, it gave you just the greatest thrill just driving past, much less driving in. And um, I said to myself a few days ago that what they must have done was order in a whole bunch of them and then sort them for height. 
because there was just no way that all of them were so very close to uniform. But even then, I, cause I'm bad enough to Google old pictures to see that there was some, there was still some differentiation. But it was within a few feet of one another because back in the day, you know, we took pride in using what good sense we had in our head to not think that this was absolutely necessary for our aesthetic pleasure. But yes, so this one here, one of these is not like the other. He's very unhappy. His head is has to have taken to wanting to come off because the rest of his body has been he has been spoken to fit in. Oh, the playing too deep to be yes. the same. Oh, yes. Right? One poem is dying from deep planting. Um when Ed would um teach this Ed said that from the first picture that he received, he knew exactly what the problem was. Because nature is not that perfect. Mm -hmm. Nature embraces the the little idiosyncrasies, you know. So he was like, yeah, tell me, they just need to go ahead and pull that one out, and replace it with something else. And they were like, well, we don't have one. And he was like, look, y'all, y'all, just, just, just do what I just told you to do before that falls over on somebody's really expensive car. Um, so this is just an example of it being just right, it's proximate and it's level and whatnot. Okay, so let's talk about common deficiencies. The most common are magnesium, manganese, potassium, iron, nitrogen, and we all know that boron makes it look as if it is crippling, right? Um, turf grass and broadleaf plants are susceptible to some of the same nutrient deficiencies. Um, but they show them differently sometimes, right? Um, any fertilizer that provides sufficient nutrients for palms will also provide, provide sufficient nutrients for turf grass and broadleaf plants. Now, I keep telling people, if you have one palm in your landscape, just use palm fertilizer for the whole thing. Call it a day. Um, when I teach the classes with our external customers, I, I look at them and I'm like, Picture those crazy households where the toddlers run things and they say, we're all having Cheetos for dinner. <laughs> Soulfish. Girl, <laughs> that's what a palm tree is in your landscape. It's Your landscape is that crazy household where the toddler runs things and we're all going to eat whatever that toddler wants to eat. Notice how, how critical I am of the whole entire scenario. Yes, it's over <laughs> shade. There is not a three-year-old in the world who's going to tell me what they're going to have for dinner much less that it's going to be Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my TED Talk on parenting. <laughs> so, y'all, Answers a lot. your palm tree, your palm tree, <laughs> a lot. Your turf grass is not a three-year-old. No, your palm trees aren't. Your palm trees are going to be the ones that says, we're all eating peanut butter and jelly for dinner and I don't care. I know what I'm but getting, Sammy and Nick. <laughs> everybody else, but everybody else will be just fine eating what the palms eat, right? That's the difference. Yeah. I would be absolutely nutritionally deficient if I were eating just Cheetos. Yeah, so with, basically with your turf grass is the one saying, if we're all going to eat, we're all going to eat this, and your palms are the ones who are going to decline. Yes, because of that. so you're going to feed your palms, and everybody and else is going to be just right. fine. Now, when I first came here, <laughs> I told the little man, I said, no, darling, you're feeding everybody. You've got to pay attention to your palm tree. Your palm tree is your wife, and whatever keeps her happy is going to keep everybody That's else right. inside. That's, That's right. a politically correct way to say that. Listen. Yeah. I am here for it, right? Whatever it gets it to sink in, he threw away all the other fertilizer, took it down to one of our transfer stations and disposed of it properly. He made sure to tell me that. And then he said, so now when do I? I said, no, 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 not for another nine months. We need all of that other stuff to go wash away. We need it to dissipate. We need it to evaporate. And then you start feeding everything what the palm tree wants. So you everything give it the magnesium, in. you give it palm fertilizer. Yes. And part of the reason for that is that when you overdo on one, then the others get knocked out. So it's good to just use something that is balanced and call it a day. Okay, because when I first came here, we were also telling people to use iron to green up their turf grass, but that would then knock other things out. 
So it's best to just use something, to use a micronutrient mix if you're gonna use anything at all, if all you're doing is just cleaning up your turf. So that the iron application doesn't knock everything else out. Yes, Susan. Um, do oak leaves provide any of that? Um, oak leaves are, they're more along the lines of organic matter that will allow what you feed it to stay in place. Now, will it eventually provide nitrogen? Yes, because they're gonna to continue to degrade. But it's not really going to provide like magnesium and manganese and potassium and iron. It's going to be a source of nitrogen eventually. But when, when your microbes break it down. Potassium, iron, no. Right, I mean, no. And our soils are nutritionally, are, are, are very deficient in potassium to begin with. You know, just like humans, our micronutrients do not come from plants. They come from minerals. Right. And so, so plant, eating dirt plants is want that the way to go. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. No, so minerals, dirt is, dirt is not necessarily minerals. It depends on where that, what dirt, that dirt is, is from. from. And so like we don't have potassium in our soil. So some, some, but we, what, what we do have is a lot of phosphorus. Yeah. Phosphorus. Let's, you know, we mine phosphorus in the state. So mm -hmm. the That's why we're going to collapse. The whole thing. <laughs> Susan, Susan. <laughs> but what I'm saying I, I need you to become Mary Sunshine. <laughs> I'm more, the one wearing I'm black and hair. Eat more roots than it. This is why salts from different parts of the world <laughs> for some people yeah. are different and can be nutritionally beneficial because when they crystallize, they capture different local minerals in their structure and deliver them nutritionally to us. Yes. And that's why some people use something called azomite in their garden. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a more it's a natural product. It is a crystallization that comes from a volcanic area, and it picks off micronutrients when it crystallizes and when they powderize that rock so that you can spread it around. Yeah. It's a micronutrient, but it's not been chemically produced. You can also chemically. Sorry, I don't even remember the name of that. Azomite. 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 You know, it, and it is locally. Available. It is locally available, but but uh, with that, I got a bag of that um, yeah. trees that come from other yeah. parts I of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Our micronutrient deficiencies in Florida because we don't have those. We don't have those things. Our soil is too young, and it is it is basically just. Yeah. And we lack some volcanoes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. So nutrient deficiencies identifying them. Yes. It's okay. One thing we lack. Um. This is a, this is an example of nitrogen deficiency. It is going to look chlorotic, which means it looks bleached, right? And there's going to be a significant um, limitation to the growth rate. My favorite people are nitrogen deficient. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you could always say they just achieve perfection a little sooner than the rest. Um, this is what a potassium deficiency looks like. Um, if you look up into the leaves, it looks like the stars are twinkling from them. Okay. And um, to be fair, potassium deficiency causes a decline in a lot of the systems of your palm trees, okay? Um, potassium deficiency can cause a palm tree to just die if it is not treated properly and promptly. Um, and that's because of the function of potassium in the in the plant. Okay. So magnesium. Symptoms will be showing in the older leaves. So you want to look at the bottom leaves, not in the middle leaves, right? Um, you're going to see chlorotic bands along the margins. Um, the central portion of the leaves will be distinctly green. So it's going to look really, really weird. It looks like a zipper. So Velstra's palms get that a lot too. Yeah. yeah. So it's going to be, it's going to look like a zipper that isn't, um, correct? And you can see this more overtly in Canary Date Palms. Yeah. In what palms? In Canary Island Date Palms. The big so fat. Yeah. Also all of them. Yes. Which also come from both volcanic. Yes, they do. Um, magnesium. Um, yellow bands around the margins and in the individual leaflets. Okay, so magnesium is readily leached from sandy and other soils having little 
cation exchange capacity, <laughs> and our soil has zero organic matter, almost, right. that would facilitate this kind of um, chemical exchange. Huh? Yes. Um, you say what? Well, the newer developments they're using more when they dig out the lakes and stuff. It's more muck or clay. Coquina, yes. Oh, no, not even coquina. Marl. 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 Yeah. Uh -huh. So, what do you do for plants that are embedded in that type of soil? Because that's what most of these new communities. That's why they die because the the water doesn't drain. Okay, uh, so let me tell you what I do. Yeah. I tell everybody who is operating in that kind of environment that they need to treat their landscape as if they're container gardening. You need to add. So you've got to set it up with the drainage. Um, I know that when Mark plants palm trees in situations like that, he puts a drainage ditch underneath the palm trees. So they actually do a whole excavation thing. They put down pebbles, they put down a layer of a filter paper, then they put the soil in there, which is basically like how we put plants in pots, right? Yes. So there are ways to, to navigate that environment if you know that that's the environment that you're navigating. Um, so I treat conditions of that nature as a container garden. A lot of people put different types like copper leaves. Uh, yes. That and I would plant that as if that is in a container and realize that the next hole over has to be a certain distance and acknowledge that both of these plants are now in separate containers. They're not a proper row. They're not one long row. They are individual containerized plants. Yes. Nikki, why is that magnesium leaf different from the nitrogen yellow leaf? Okay, so the chlorosis in the nitrogen leaf is complete. It's the whole entire thing that's yellowed out. Now, for the magnesium, it's just the tips, right? Yes. And it's to the it's to the older leaves, and we have um, handouts that'll show you like the portions of the leaves that you're looking for certain nutrient deficiencies. But we've got to keep going. Yes. Another John? question: When you go back to that nitrogen, you know it's chloritic. Does that affect other plants? I got Jamaican yes. taper, and it's yellow. Yes. So. Yes. It's and if you're container hard. gardening, huh? it's spring is really hard on Jamaican taper. Yes. And if you're container gardening in your backyard, which is what I suspect that you're doing, um, then your plant is not receiving the nutrients that it requires, and I would recommend that you get a palm fertilizer. Palm fertilizer, okay. Okay, and part of the rationale for that as well, let me fully disclose to you all my thought process on this. Palm trees are fruit trees. Yes, they are. Grass and fruit. Yes, they are. And grass is fruit. Grass is fruit. All of them are fruit trees. And so for your plants of that nature, so a lot of times if I get a if I get in a client that says, Well, I've got a pear tree or not a pear tree, but you're called avocado, or mango tree or a guava tree, I send them for palm fertilizer. Because it has the proper mix of the things that that plant would need, mm -hmm. and with the focus on what are the nutrients for fruiting. So I would say to you, use palm fertilizer in small dosages because you don't want to overrun your container. What? Your plant is not likely to be stretching or extending roots very far out of what you <clears throat> have already massaged that soil to be. So check it carefully and make sure that you're not going to inundate that soil with too much food. And Nikki, are you sprinkling the palm fertilizer around it, or are you digging a trench and putting it in? It depends on what it is I'm fertilizing and what is down there on the ground, because there are lots of people who have their soil. And I try to tell people who, when they send in pictures of their bare soil, I'll say to them, okay, fertilize your plant, and then put some mulch on top so that there's less zap and less transportation of your fertilizer, okay? Well, if you've got mulch, then I would say just scooch some of it away along the drip line area, put your fertilizer in, and then cover it back up because nitrogen likes to dance away. What yes, month? What, month? what month for what? Fertilizer. 
it's a fruit tree. You can fertilize your fruit trees all year round. Yeah. So the ponds can be fertilized so we can all year all round. round. Yeah. Don't go crazy, I, summer. I would bet the county yeah. would disagree on that yeah. one. So let me tell you something. The county would not disagree on that one no. because if you're using the right type of fertilizer at the right time at the correct rate, they have no qualms with my advice. So let me be fair and honest with you all that the ordinance says you can fertilize your fruit tree yeah. through the yes, bag. You can. Thank you for yes. attending my TED Talk on these are the ways that we never get. You, want to spend um, you need to follow the label on the, on the bag. Are you making money? Legally, you need to follow whatever the label says. Right. And so, no, no, when the, the label is the law. The label is the law. So, depending on what it is you're fertilizing, you need to find the requirements for that plant and utilize the fertilizer that is applicable for that circumstance. Okay. Um, I will tell you all, quite honestly, that this is not the time of the year to be fertilizing palm trees. No, no, no. Because they're going to sleep like their first cousin's grass. Yeah. Okay. Manganese. Symptoms of manganese deficiency occur in the newest leaves. So look into your crown area, and if you see that it looks frizzled, <laughs> sort of like what my hair looks like sometimes when I let it loose, then you've got issues with manganese, okay? And this is caused primarily by high pH soils. What sort of soils do we have here? High pH. Yes. High, high, high. We are in the alkaline range. Okay. That is a queen palm showing frizzled new leaves. Okay. My queen palms are robust. They have yet to be fed in the four years that I've been in my house, and they do not care. Yeah, you don't. They, girl, they don't give okay. a doggone yeah, be. about whether or not I feed them or, or or even say good morning to them. They're just out there being their wonderful palm bells. Why? Because they're determined. They're big. They're yeah, like I was here you first. Know, you know, you you buy an orchid at a store and it's beautiful and big and thick because they fertilize. They fertilize the heck out of it. With water. In right. There. All right, so this is manganese deficiency up close, and that one is potassium deficiency. Notice how they look similar, very similar, but you're going to notice that when you hold this up, you're going to see the stars twinkling in the leaves, okay? And it has the frizzling tree. It has necrosis, but not frizzling. Okay, so iron deficiency. New leaves will come out yellow green. Okay. This is caused by poor soil aeration, too deep planting, and our notorious high soil pH. Green spots will be superimposed on those chlorotic leaves. So instead of the yellow being the outlier, the green will be the outlier in your iron deficiency. Boron deficiency is one of my favorites. Oh, y'all. It's caused by the boron being leached out of the root zone as a result of high irrigation, of high rainfall or, air, or excessive irrigation. We have both, right? We have both. Um, when leaching stops boron from released from decomposing organic matter, will again provide adequate boron for normal palm growth. If you're trying to get coconuts off of your palm tree, you've definitely got to do something about your boron leaching away, if, if that is the case. And there goes a little zigzag. Okay, this is an early and mild symptom of boron deficiency. Your plant is still salvageable. It's when all of it goes to pot, I have to look at folks and I'm like, so this is multiple unopened spear leaves. That is when I would call that plant DOA. By the time that gets to me, it's like, I have a chainsaw you can borrow. <laughs> that. Yeah. yeah, that was that that's a that's a plant causing that's a plant in great. Stress, right? 
that really, really needs to be yeah, had to treat it like a boron. So you just treat. cut nothing you can do for it. Yeah. No, no, honey. What if it's just yeah. so? So this this is this yeah. is when you just you just call the morgue. You don't call an ambulance. Even if it's a little zigzag. It's no, 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 no. This is where you can still do something with with the tips. This is this is an early and mild symptom of boron deficiency. But when you get to this and that. Yeah. What do you do? You okay. cut them down. No, no, the early one. Oh, Why? you give them palm fertilizer with my palm fertilizer. Yeah. Yes. You just give them the palm fertilizer and you and you wait patiently for it to go up. Yeah, not gonna happen into the system. Don't even don't it, and if it's a if it's a even a palm tree that, that is that is this tall, you can wait for months before you see the results of your fertilization efforts, okay? Yeah. All right. Oh. Yeah, that looks like a cake. Yeah, it looks like a, a, a naughty bar has been out there, and the truth is that's just boron deficiency mm -hmm. showing itself. Uh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then these are the frizzles. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So, so that is when you say to yourself, "This is excessive. Call the more, come get the body." Okay. Um, treating severe palm deficiencies, be patient. Sometimes four to six months before you see any kind of difference. Um, there are some things that can be relieved with a foliar application of nutrients. Let's not avoid those. Um, but sometimes once two years or even more before. And as long as it is still a plant that is deemed viable, then go ahead and start a, a, a better feeding pattern with your plants, okay? That's, that's perfectly fine. Uh, yes. Before you move on. Uh, Coconut palms, you have the Jamaican poles and the May pans. Some people say, oh, my coconut palm is dying. Is that, I, I know in Jamaican palms, uh, they're susceptible to bud rot, but May pans are not. So, what do you suggest to someone who says, oh, my coconut palm is dying? You say, spray it with copper sulfate or just cut it down? It depends on what they think, the, the, what the plant is really appearing to die from, right? Whatever, so we have to diagnose what's killing the plant before I say to you, this is not reversible, go ahead and take it down. Because if it's like in other palm trees, if there's Ganoderma, then go ahead and cut it down, right? Mm -hmm. But if it's a, like with the boron new, um, deficiency, if we're just looking at the hooked ends, if we're just looking at the hooked tips on a palm tree, then that's fixable. So I can't give you like a diagnosis without going through the checklist of what are the problems. What is what is it that the palm tree is exhibiting for me to tell you Jamaican coconut versus uh, one from the Philippines, I think that is. Uh, May pan. Right. Yeah. So I would say to you, you'd have to, <laughs> you'd have to diagnose the palm to find out what the real problem is and then determine whether or not you've got to cut it down. I wouldn't say, well, just cut it down because it looks funny. So you just go through all those fertilizers? Yes, you go, through, you go through the checklist and you say, what is the palm looking like that causes me to believe that it is unhealthy? Now, is this something that is normal in palm trees? Or is it, so it would be my imagination that something is wrong? Or is there something truly wrong? And then when you find out what is truly wrong, then you can say, usually this problem is relieved by doing something that is cost-effective and, and, and useful, or it is a problem that is not treatable or manageable, and now I need to remove that plant. So do you have the checklist that you go through as a master gardener? You yeah, know, we, have a plant, we have a plant diagnosis oh, okay. checklist. Yeah. All right, insects and diseases, key pests of plants. I do have a couple of slides in there, I think, with the insects. 
But the diseases that are usually that usually take them up are fusarium wilt, um, Ganoderma butt rot, um, phytoplasmic diseases like leafy yellowing. We don't say Texas Dream Palm decline anymore because Texas does not want to own it. <laughs> right? Um, I don't blame Texas. Um, Texas is the Lone Star State that wants zero attachments, okay? Zero. Um, so these are, let's talk about diseases. Diseases are an interaction between the plant and a pathogen that disrupts the normal growth and appearance of the plant. There are some things that palm trees just do that deserve Dr. Seuss's full attention and adoration because it's just so, so peculiar. But it does not mean it's being harmed in any way, shape, or form. It's just, hey, I am me and I'm amazing, right? So this is the disease triangle. We've got to have a susceptible host, a favorable environment, and a pathogen that is virulent. It has to be strong. So when you stir that up into a pot, then you get a disease. Right? Without those three elements, you will not have disease. This is, you know how they will talk about the perfect storm? We have a lot of, of, of opportunities for perfect storms in our landscapes here in Florida, right? But we also have a lot of opportunities to just take away one of these things. We might love that susceptible host <laughs> tremendously, right? We can't get rid of that pathogen being in our environment because how do we get rid of all the fungi in Florida? But we can totally change the culture that that plant is living in. We can change the environment that that plant is living in. So we can put our lady palms in a pot on the north side of our land. Thing. You've got your native, you've got your lady palms that you really, really wanted to have because you saw them in good housekeeping once upon a time. Great job. But even if it is susceptible to a pathogen, we have eliminated that favorable environment for it to become disease. Now, I haven't seen a doggone thing that does anything to those palms, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm just giving them an example. <laughs> That's all. It's not like I've gotten into a couple of fights. Maybe you'll come before. back. I might have. And I've won every last one of them, by the way, because I was informed in 2016 that I am stubborn. And it's a good thing. <laughs> that was the first time. I I was, that was the first time. <laughs> <laughs> My stubbornness became a superlative. In now we got over this decade. <laughs> right now, prior to that, it was it was told to me as if I was a terrible person for being stubborn. But I have found out that my stubbornness is actually an asset and not a liability. <laughs> I have moved that over on my balance sheet, right? And I have come out in the black now, <laughs> literally. Okay, so Ganoderma butt rot of palms. It is fungal. It is a fungal pathogen. And the thing about that is, and I love it when people come to me and tell me that they did not care about my great advice from four years ago. They replanted a palm tree there, and their, and their palm tree is doing very well. I smile at them and I say to them something that is, is, from, that is from my childhood, which is time is longer than rope. Okay, that's a good one. Right, and 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 I or or if I really don't care about them, okay, so that's ninety eight percent of the time, y'all. If I really don't care about them, I just smile at them and I say, "That's fantastic." Yeah, that's what you say. Call me for you. I don't have time to be arguing with people about their foolish decisions. I'm busy making my own. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so. <laughs> all right. Ganoderma butt rot is caused by the fungus Ganoderma zonatum. Yes, it, is, it is it it is a time for us to encourage them to just go rent a chainsaw at Home Depot, engage a careless tree company with a really great insurance to come and cut down the plant, whichever way it needs to come out. From the time we see conks, from time the Smurfs are living under the tree, it needs to go. 
It should not be allowed to stay there. Now, there are going to be people who say to you, but it's Florida. And you smile at them and say, you know, that just make sure that your homeowner's insurance is up to date and fully paid. If it is proximate to your if building. You have it, it, if, right. <laughs> if it is proximate to your building. Right? These these are the things. And you and you can and, and, and I would not engage with them in, in the ridiculous and ar arbitrary argument about well what if. Y'all don't have time for that. No, Smile at them. What I hear people ask is what did I do wrong? And, and you can tell them, you did not do anything yeah, wrong. Welcome to Florida, where the humidity and the fungi are abundant. Oh, yes, it is. Um, pa no. No. No, no, no. There is also Ganoderma that, that, that is on oak trees. Yeah. They get it. Right? And the and the, Yes. Yes. If you see yes. 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 So symptoms may include wilting. It can be mild to severe or a just a general decline. Okay. And the disease is confirmed by observing the basidio carp, which we call a conch. Um, I did overhear a volunteer, I think it was in Orange County on the phone a few years ago, telling someone to on the phone, right? Is there a Basidio cart? If y'all do some crazy things like that on our phone in our clinic, yeah. I'm telling y'all from now. Is there now. a big old mushroom hanging on the there Right. Yeah, there I need for you all <laughs> to remember what what is there a place to 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 be introduced to the world of. We are out here to translate the jargon to our people, right? You do not get brownie points on the phone because you know the word basidio cart. You get brownie points on the phone. It's it's the conch. It's a little mushroom, mushroom. right? So so you all get brownie points for being able to help that customer ease through a, a, a an, an annoying situation. That's what you all get points from our customers for. You all get points for making it easy. Don't get points for being able to show them that you've got 88 master's degrees and like it. it I'm telling you all the truth. Are we gonna get solving solving pruning? Yes. So butt rot. We all know wait, this. Wait, oh my God. God. Yes. Does that happen uh, to trees that are also declining, or yeah. do they happen? Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. the fungi have arrived yeah. to assist with the degradation of this plant. Okay. And everyone near it. At home, we get them in New England and we eat them. No, 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 no. These are different. These are different. These are different fungi. These are different fungi. These are different fungi. Okay. So this is. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. There are currently no cultural or chemical controls for preventing the disease. Yes. This is what the homeowners. Don't want to hear, but probably need to hear more yes. than anything. Yes. They, they get very frustrated yes. when you go, one of my trees went down to Ganoderma. What can I do for the other one? Keep them yeah. dry, nothing in prey. Right. Yes. Right. But if you see conks on your palm tree, that means the whole inside structure is fungi out. So the other tree should be fertilized. Get, get that healthy. No. No, because... Because the other trees just need to stay dry as possible. Okay. Um, you can fertilize them to keep them as healthy as you can, but I would not recommend fertilizing because fertilizer attracts more things that'll use it. Nature is very efficient like that. Yeah. All right. So Cereloptis trunk rot the palm. Basically, it is when the palm tree just. Yeah. Yeah. Over. But did it just peel over? No. 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 It took a while. It took a while. Right. Okay. Fusarium wilt on Canary Island date palm because that is where it usually shows up the most. There is a reddish brown stripe at the petiole of the palm tree that you need to be aware of. Okay. That does not look like nutrient deficiencies that we just showed. So it is easy. Um, this gets transmitted usually by dirty. Shears. And that's a common problem in the Phoenix Rubellini. Yes. Okay. And here's the other thing that you all need to be aware of. That's the one that I love. To see these here? And you're going to keep on cutting, right? And 
trustees that don't already have it, they're going to, and, and, and where are you cutting? You're cutting close to the base of the plant so that the fungi don't have too far to transport cells. Okay? Um, Fusarium wilt of queen palms and Mexican sand palms as well. That's what it looks like. Okay, lowest leaflets on the left. Oh, and, and, it, and, it, and it's one sided. It's so cute. <laughs> it really is. Look at that. Look at that. Yes. Yeah. All right. Lethal bronzing of the Phoenix palms, especially, but it has been seen in a lot of other um, cultivars. That is what lethal bronzing looks like. It looks like it's just been frozen. Like that screen picture. It's been like, that's what it looks like. It looks like a Washingtonian palm. No, those are tables. Uh -huh. Is that one on the right? No. I thought it's stable. Oh, that's Washington. Washington. That is a Washington. That's a Washington. Yeah, that's a Washington. Sorry. Oh, um, and it spreads naturally to palms by sap-feeding insects such as the plant hoppers. Um, okay. And they will sit down in there and they will just continue to feast on the crown of the palm tree because like, it's really delicious. And they don't want to fly everywhere. They just stay there until it's dead is dead. Early symptoms include premature fruit drop and death of the inflorescence of the flowers. So if you've got plants that, that are making the fruit fruiting fronds, but you're just not seeing any evidence of the fruit, that's one of the early symptoms of the Um oh. Death of the spare leaf is one of the things. Necrotic older leaves then would be this mark get that? Yeah. Yeah. I either have that or lightning. Well, I mean, either way, you need to cut that thing. Well, it's gonna have to be cut down. <laughs> so my husband finally says, I think we have to cut that palm out there, it's not green at all. Right. I think they're throwing around this is bronze bronze and and I'm a new one for Um well I'm I'm not gonna be concerned about it because when I see a palm tree that looks like those things, yeah, it doesn't matter to me what's other, causing it gone. because at the end of the day the, the sphere is inside right. is dead yeah. and it needs to come down. Yeah. That's all I tell folks. Yeah, all right. Um I know it has to come down. Symptoms are the same for all of the Phoenix species. All right. There is a management um technique, but at the end of the day you can only Fluff it up for so long. Center leaves are dead. I mean, <laughs> right. Like y'all. A lot of those out there need to come down. Um, they are very, very horrible. Okay, so leaf spots. Brown with a chlorotic halo um, that is not raised. A lot of this is caused by overhead irrigation spreading the disease. Um, some merge and form. <clears throat> larger necrotic areas that look very blighted. Primary hosts in Florida are, you guess it, the ones that I would not put anywhere near my landscape. I, I don't really understand what the attraction is with the canary date palms anyway, because like those thorns are just it's, it's, is it really just a symbol of money? Yes, yeah. it is. Oh my yeah, that, that's God. Well, I have yeah, money yeah, because they're all over <laughs> on the, you know. People think it makes them look wealthy. <laughs> I'm so yeah. dead, y'all. Please. I have a garbage bin if you really want to be like I'm a baller and a shot caller. Just come throw some dirt, throw some of your money in my garbage bin. I'll even videotape you and put you on YouTube. You ask Mark about it. You ask him. Who Listen to me. Mary Day oh, yeah. So no, people. People. no people. Me. Okay, so no, Graciola, my yeah. spot, which yeah, is a false mutt. Yeah. I'm running out of time. So this is a fungal disease. It just looks like a bunch of little black flecks, like someone took black paint and flecked the leaves. Um, it's primarily cosmetic. It really does not do much of anything on the plant. Okay. This. <clears throat> would you tell someone if they had that to spray the tree with fungicide? Just Honestly, it. no. Because it doesn't, like, it's not harming the tree, right? So, we get a lot of I would tell them to just be like, either, you know, just, just live with it. Um, palm leaf skeletonizer, use BT. That's part of or, or other approved insecticide. Um, yes. Yeah. It is food for the birds, but there are some people who don't have any birds because they don't have anything like birds in their um, landscape. You can also just cut those leaves 
Um, you can wash the caterpillars off with water as well. Um, prune out severe damage if it is desired. If, you, if you're just not enjoying the view, you can go ahead and prune off severe damage if it is desired. But again, it's not absolutely necessary. Palmetto Weevil. I love these guys. Bismarck. Yes, that is a Bismarck that they manage. Yep. And what they are attracted to the most Transplant stress. Your plants are actually putting out chemicals in the environment that attract these weevils. And the plants are like, help me! Help me! They're trying to kill me over here! I need you to come and take me! Like, euthanasia is real in the palm tree life. Um, palmetto weevils will come and assist your palm trees with their emergency and help them to not be so unhappy. All right? Um, pruning, what to trim, how and how much to remove, number of leaves that are produced per year, and a few examples. Okay, what do you trim? Dead leaves and, and fruit stalks. stalks. Oh, right. You're going to also prune badly damaged leaves because you don't want that open wound just sitting there as a, as a pathway for infection. You can remove the flower, flower stalks. You can remove the fruit stalks which are coconuts before a hurricane, even though I've not really seen them blow off. Some of your no, palms they don't don't blow off. removing oh, those fruit prematurely will kill the palm too. Well, um, yeah. you can if you're if you're you properly if you're properly removing your fruiting stalks, the only thing that you're doing is allowing your plant to shift its energy focus. That's all you're doing. Okay, and if you're like me, you really do not want not another fox tail in your yard. And the really don't fly off. I they they in, don't. I was in Nassau. They just hold on to their nuts with <laughs> great size. None of the coconuts <laughs> blew off any of the trees behind us. None of them. Right. And, 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 and to be fair, if it is a storm that is going to blow coconuts oh, yeah. off of your tree, but you're, it's usually the early summer. You need to be evacuating and ignoring the whole idea of worrying about them coconuts. Yeah. <laughs> that's not your biggest problem. They really don't. That's not your biggest problem, right? <laughs> like, if this is a storm that is going to walk upon the face of the earth where you live, <laughs> and it's going to take away your nuts, the nuts. And you need to be so much more concerned about other things than your coconuts, than your coconuts themselves. So yes, uh, a reef of palms have all all those nuts hanging off. So the fruiting buddies. Yeah. Um, the, the bees love that. So no, 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 no. The bees love the flowers. Right. Yeah. So you can you can cut them off after they start to form fruit. Ah. Uh, right. Okay. And the birds don't really eat the areca fruit, so, but the bees do go for the nectary of the flowers. Yeah. Okay. And if you don't, you'll have. So you can always make a plan. You can always make a plan. To um to just to give the bees their opportunity yeah, to have their buffet and then you get them removed. Okay, thanks. That's okay. Why you say but the birds eat the, the, the stable palm. Fruit. The birds eat the stable palm fruits, but not the fruit of the areca. No, because the arecas are not. No, and the areca palm. They were there before. I I can be honest with you and say that I put it in my mouth and I. They're not delicious. You know, we need to change that saying. That saying, the nine to three, three to nine, because the clock goes clockwise. <laughs> nine to three, we're actually telling. I I'm, know. I'm Karen, little, I'm sorry. We really Karen, need to change that saying. I really let me let me be honest with three you. Three to nine. I <laughs> would like to not have the blooming clock or the three to nine up there. Yeah, but, but if you but well, but if you must. And and to be fair with you all, I would rather four and eight. I would go for four and eight more than three and nine. But you know, we have to compromise for the other human beings who are not of the jungle aesthetic like I am. Okay? There are lives between trees if your cerium is present. Um do not attempt to tear the leaves. Because you do not want to have a permanent trunk wound and potential injury site for diseased organisms. Notice that this is a okay, different that, that, type that, of site altogether. I like that. That's a different way to say it. All right. The lollipop. This is what they ought to look like because yeah. this is how they wake up in the morning. Like a mohawk. Okay? Just like that. If you must change.
change the way that this plant grows naturally. <coughs> and at least give it an inviting chance to want to remain in your landscape. Yes. This is what we should have called over pruning. We did not say that it, it was a hurricane cut. We didn't no, call it a mohawk it. because we don't want to feed the fire of misinformation. This is simply over pruning, which is saying it is a poor practice. Which is it what should not be done. We send out a flyer. All of the tree companies do not do it. It is just the ones that are most conspicuous. And Susan, we can send out 8 million flyers. As long as there are some people who are trying to keep up with the Joneses and the Joneses are ignorant, we're going to keep this crap well, A lot of times they do it because money. And the tree places sell it as a package. But, but a lot of times they do it because they don't want to have to have a tree company come back every day every twice a year. Okay, okay. But, but you know what? It's the tree company can come once a year if we stick with this. Yeah, but they don't want to. If they trim it like that, and the tree company can come years. twice a year if we do this. Right. But you see this? You know, different companies. You know what the tree company is going to do? The tree company is going to get money for abusing your plant. Yep. Then they're going to get money for replacing your plant. Eventually. And, and Right. And I don't know about you all, but I'm not buying not one palm tree. I don't care what kind it is. It's going to be too expensive on my budget. But now that's the time they tell you that you can trim them like that. When you're transplanting, they tell you yes. that's fine. Now you can over prune it to transplant it safely because then it's easier for them to transport it, right? But after, after it is fully established, yeah, don't do it. you oughtn't have that as your default. So, okay, yes. Wrong. I read an article, an IFAS article, and her, the author was like, why Why are people doing this? Right. And it's because if you Google palm tree, what are you going to see? A coconut palm. Those top, they look kind of like that, and that's what everybody's Not view of a palm tree is. But here, sable palms, if, they, if we, you Google palm trees and you got all sable palms, People would say, oh, that's what a palm tree is supposed to look like. Wrong front. And, you know, what? Wrong front. Yeah, wrong front. <laughs> right. So now, the other, the other thing with that is, again, with when you Google these things, when you're Googling these things from where you are in the world, mm -hmm. and you watch enough of anything in the world, you get these ideas that Florida is only filled with coconuts and royals. Right. I kid you not. Coconuts and royals that's are all we, all we have in the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. See? Well, that's all we have. Tahiti mm -hmm. has coconut palms, yes. right? They were not native to Tahiti. No. You go to Tahiti and that's all you see because they only plant fruiting plants. Yes. Guava, mango, avocado. Because they're amazing. smart people. It's really smart. It they're really smart is. people. They can use the and yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so number of leaves produced per year in South Florida. <clears throat> Coconut palm will eight. produce 10. Oh, okay, and that's if they're healthy. And, and here's the other thing with that. Let us consider the fact that a coconut palm leaf is usually taller than I am if it's a healthy coconut palm. Yeah. Right, so that's a lot of plant material. Okay, and then we've got the phoenix palm that will push out 50 leaves if it is healthy in one year, okay? If it is healthy, if it is planted in the correct spot, if it is being fed properly, if it is being managed correctly, it will put out 50 leaves. Now, when we prune a phoenix back, sometimes you'll see a whole pile of leaves like up to here from a phoenix when you, when you walk past the providers of this service, right? So you're looking at them getting like 20 fronds removed when they get pruned, and that's when they're lucky. Okay, stable palmetto Terrible. will only make about eight fronds a year. When we hurricane cut a sable, and when they cut 30 off of them, come on. And then Washingtonias, they will make 60 leaves a year if they're healthy. If they're in the right place, if they're being managed correctly, they will put out 60. Now, here's the problem with all of that. When we keep on robbing them of their leaves, what are they going to put their effort into? 
making leads, right? Yeah. And they're going to keep on. Yes, they're going to grow taller because we can see where the leaves were attached and that's going okay. up, right? That's how they live. Right. So we're encouraging height, lack of width. We're encouraging height because we're making it have to produce more leaves, right? But is that the best practice for your plants? And we all know that they're there. <laughs> okay. Why, may I ask, why yeah. do some flavor palms look like that one on the left with no boots and others will have the boots all the way because down? Because some want them and some don't want them. Okay, so. Just the plants? Yes. yes. It's, it's not a variety. Uh, and if sometimes. No. And it's eventually it's it'll all fall off. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they don't. And sometimes it depends. They don't. And, it, and it, also, it also depends on how. The, the human that has the plant yeah. is managing it as well. Because most of them are like out in the wild. Right? In the wild, oh, yeah. some don't ever in lose it. In the wild, some of them don't ever, ever lose it. it. And, the book yeah. is and it never rocks off or anything. Yeah. It just never, it, and those are usually in, in your dry hammock areas. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so no pruning is needed on that palm um, there. No, I think I this think. is an over -pruned. Plant. And you see how many flowers that is? Because it's trying to survive. It is, it is saying, if I am not wanted here, may my children fare better. Right? That's what it's saying. I need to make sure that some part of my DNA is left here. And so it is creating an abundance of babies that can be replacing that. Okay? All right. How about these here? Overprint. But you won't have to find them here. This causes stress. It makes them more susceptible to insects and diseases. But the whole point is you won't have to prune these every year because they don't die. They're going to die. I explained to people in the wind, mm -hmm. okay, this is the heart of the tree. Right. So in the wind, you want all yeah. of these palm from You want, want that insulation there. Why don't you they just leave the, the heart for that look if they don't have that look? Julia, because they're human <laughs> beings and they've got ideas. You yeah. find them like that um, all everywhere. And, 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 and it is also a combination of a lack of education as well as they I don't. They never intended that palm to look like that. But they you, but you have, people Julia, say palm they don't so know. Ugly. Yes, they do. People say yes. A lot of people. No, no, no. They'll say sable palm so ugly, so and I go, you go in the wild and you look at them. Right. They, oh, are, they do not treat. Like Again, we are dealing with people who do not, who, who for the most part do not know. And then there are some who are like, but I want what I want. And I look at them and I say, you should have what you want, but you're not ever going to get it from this. May I introduce you to this? Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes you talk to the tree guys and they'll go, well, that, that it's just fine. But do you also know the, the certifying society that does arbor, certifying arbor. arbor uh -huh. they do not cut green out of a palm tree? Yes. yes. Never take it's part of the test. Yes. It's, it's part of the test. But, but those, they do. those certification agencies are not writing checks to these people who are actually doing the work. Uh, and and the people who are actually doing the work. So are afraid to educate their customers yeah, because they don't want it to be seen. No, it will not. They do not want to be seen as arguing with their client because the client is always right. I'm at my so, golf course one day and I told this guy, I said, you know you're over pruning these trees. You don't need to prune it like that. And he looks at me and goes, lady, he says, I've been trimming problems longer than you probably lived here. I said, really? I've been here since the early 1900s. <laughs> I love it, Karen. Yes. Yes. I'm here for the first Okay, so so again, oh, uh, the providers know better than to do this, but they're pandering to their clientele who should not be pandered to. They should be educated. Right. Yeah. And when I teach the professionals, I encourage them, I say, look, they're gonna blame you either way. <laughs> It died due to it. Yeah. Let me and, and 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 you should see the looks on their faces. They're like, what? I said, and and there is no billboard or truck that you drive that's going to give you any better advertisement than a satisfied customer. Educate your customer. Tell your 
don't be like me and look at folks and be like, it's obvious you're not from around here. So let me tell you a couple of things, right? That's not what you do. But you look at your customer and say, Mr. Customer, I care about the job that I'm doing here for you. And I want you to be satisfied with it. And so I want, I want to give you some information that you may not have. And then you can make a decision. Let your client make an informed decision. And then if they still want you to whack back the, that palm tree, by all means, baby, have the... He's going to say, I, I, I will charge twice a year to come here and do my palm? No. Yeah. That is the way I want them, and then I will have... Then, that, then that's fine. That's but at least, at least your client no longer has plausible deniability. Oh, right? Yeah, I knew that was going to kill right. the tree. Right. <laughs> So that so that when 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 you hear from another client, oh well, the Joneses up the street said that you abused their palm trees, and now they have another provider, and you're crap. You can smile at them and say, well, did Mr. Jones say, show you the publications like this that I'm giving you, so you can have better information on how to manage your palms? I have two two very special little landscapers right now. I might get an email maybe once or twice a month from them. Hey, Nikki, what have you got on this? Aww. I've got a client, and I can't argue with them. But I, I, you're right. I care about my reputation. The battle is not won with one approach, y'all. Put that lady on the side of their truck. <laughs> right. You know, so we've, we've, we've got, you all are one part of the approach for us. To, to give proper information and education in the community. But make no mistake, we're here to support our landscapers. They're not all bad and they're not all with poor intentions. They're just up against the rock and the hard place when it comes to, oh, do I want a paycheck want. or do I want to educate my clients? That's why they don't know that they can have it all. Right, they don't know. That's why it's important to take these educational programs yes. out into the community and the public. We are educational. Absolutely. Programs. So we had a situation where a gentleman called in about his turf grass, and the landscaper had called in about the turf grass, and I'm sitting down with the landscaper, and we're going through the checklist of things that have been happening with the turf grass, right? Oh man, y'all, humans. I love them from a distance, from a very far distance. Where the world looks okay, amazing. what was the problem? The problem was that the homeowner was assisting the landscaper. Oh, really? The homeowner was fully capable of over-irrigating his landscape himself, as well as encouraging the well, landscaper I only to over like lawn four to five times a week. Listen to me, girl, and, and, and put down four and five inches while they were at it. Yeah. The turf grass did not stand a chance. And the man and his worker showed up with a box. Listen to me, a box of samples, like 12 gallon Ziploc bags of, and pull up and put into, I was like, y'all are amazing. And, and the turf grass that had been down for six months was right here, and the rest of the soil was right here, and never shall they meet, Oh, right? The turf grass never had a chance. And there was no talking to the homeowner. There was also a lot of education that the landscaper required. And so now I'm like, yeah, we need to stress those teenagers out and they got to sink or swim on their own. Absolutely. Okay? So, again, it's not always I don't care. There's a lot of I don't know enough to make a better decision. So why I'm, I'm being belligerent with you and telling you what I want, because I think I know. I think I know what I want. I want what I saw down the road, because that's what I saw on TV, and that's how my Florida home is supposed to look. Well, there is another thing. When you have a healthy, good um, canopy of sable palms, and you go to this, you lose habitat. So in our neighborhood, we have a lot of bunny problems. Well, people that have not trimmed their sable palms have owls that live. Yes. There. Guess what keeps the owls? The bunny. Listen, I have I have a rotating owl who assists me with all of my rabbit issues, and he shows up. He shows up just in time. He shows up when, and you're correct. Um, 
We, I don't have any over pruned trees. <laughs> there is there is pleasure in laziness uh, <laughs> and and not enough time to do it all. But yes, you are correct. This is habitat producing, right? And we need to make sure that we're we're leveraging our landscape to do all of the Florida friendly yeah. techniques, which is part of that is providing for wildlife. Mm -hmm. All right. Wait, wait, how do you fertilize that some of the palm that's sticking out of the cement? <laughs> <laughs> How does it live? Yeah. It's going to live just fine. Susan, there are so many plants that are. I'm a plant in real life. They're stubborn. They're determined to live. They 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 they, they survive all the adverse conditions that they possibly can, and they do the best they can with what they've got. And eventually, those plants in the sidewalk that are victims of our abuse will either live to fight another day yeah. or they end up being removed because they can't do it anymore. Okay, let's go. Yes. Yeah. Normal abnormalities in palms. One yes. The seed pods in these cabbage palms, they kind of tend to hang out about 10 and 2. And so when we're going to cut off the seed pods, we can do that tightly. All that work's going to get done with a chainsaw. No. And yes. so that's how you get a lot of these hurricane cuts because you say, well, I want to get the seed pods out yep. right. from the bottom up. And well, well, I'm fully aware that take them right there are other tools that can and should be used. But they won't. And, they come right well, that, 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 that depends on how the contract was negotiated, right? So, again, if you all make an agreement with a provider for nine and three, that provider has to do nine and three. And then they have to go into their arsenal of tools, which they have, to be able to go ahead and say, okay, dude, I'm following behind you with the chainsaw. You take off as many of those fronds as you possibly can, and I'll come in and do the fine work. Mm -hmm. It is entirely possible. Now, is it getting done? No. But again, the usual intention is for that BS to happen anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's easier. Now, if we're having the nine and three conversation, then you've got a provider who already knows that they're going to be using something different to get in there for those, right? Plus, okay. honestly, keeping the seed pods through the migratory birds. Yes, it's critical. Okay, so critical. Now, folks, if and if this were our provide for wildlife lecture, yeah, I know. then we would all be on that, right? But this is human beings, visual aesthetics, how do we come closer to right? We're not going to be completely right because that would just be too right. Okay? We're not going to come completely to right. But how do we get a little closer to right? And then let people get comfortable there and say, you know what? I can do a little bit more of this Florida friendly thing. It, it didn't kill me. We're boiling frogs, folks. We're boiling frogs. Okay, normal abnormalities in palms. Like yes. <laughs> These are adventitious roots. Look at that. Did you go back to the previous? I think you had the Washington. Yeah. On the yeah. Left. Do you leave those uh, frogs on there? Because I've seen a lot of Washingtonians. Yes, absolutely. So, if I were to own a Washingtonian, it would look just like this. <laughs> That's, that's and that would be because of the ecosystem services that it provides. Yep. And the fact that I just think it's funny looking. And I'm a Dr. Seuss fan. Bearded Palm. Right? I, I, would, I would have to name it something real funky from the book. Okay? So, yes. Now, are there lots of people who do not have this as a preference? Yes. Yeah. And part of that is in their imagination is not this in fruition. But if we can get one out of 10 people to have this kind of palm tree in their landscape to say, you know what? It's not what I read about in the book. It's not, it's not the pictures that I saw. But I know this is not going to kill me to have this in my yard, but it will add to its services that it provides my landscape. Then we'll get, and I'm, I'm not aiming for all 10. I'm aiming for one out of that ten. It's still enough. But Nikki, you can buy a ladder when you have all that. 
Um, so to be fair and honest, not really. <clears throat> and part of the reason why I'm saying that is that there is usually adequate moisture hidden in there because of it being covered like that and because of what it's keeping. Now, if you see the things escaping from in there, <laughs> yeah, you might have then, then, then your house is on fire anyway, and you don't have to worry about it, <laughs> right? With the rats, you know, there, there's, <laughs> there are so many things that there are so many things that we blame on the reasons why we make our aesthetic choices on that are truly just aesthetic choices. Because if these are going up in flames and they're in your less than quarter acre lot, <laughs> honey, you got other issues, <laughs> right? You got a lot of other issues. And I, and, and I know I say things in ways that, that make, make it seem funny. I am not intentionally funny about things like that. I'm just being honest. If this is about to catch on fire, your evacuation route is clogged. You should have left three days ago. Don't worry about that tree. Because the other thing with that is, this is more likely to survive than your structure. Yeah. Okay. All right, so adventitious roots. My favorite question is, what do we do? And I, above that tree. <laughs> and I say, leave it alone. Um, and then the other question is, well, can we cut them to make them look like the rest of the bark? Uh, Ooh, yeah. If you want to kill it, cut that tree. Palm. You can't. Hey, you shouldn't. Phil just said, yep. I'm telling you all, human beings, we're undefeated with the BS. We are. Like, we are undefeated. Okay. Maybe only one. Now, there's a palm guy down in Miami. My daughter, coconuts were all like that. Mm -hmm. And he says, it's okay if you pile dirt around. It. You can. Now, now me said flowers around it. Yes, so, yes, you can. But, okay, now, Claire's bark, it is caused because of the development. Um, splitting and spreading of the bark at the base of the trunk is just fine as well. Normal. That's what's been happening in my backside as I get older. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> thank you so much, Laura, for coming back. Yeah. Well, I'll be the judge of that. Yes, you look. I am the coordinator of PMI anyway. Oh, um, okay. Setting up leaf bases. All dead leaves remain firmly attached to the trunk, forming a skirt. And up under that skirt are a myriad of things that I don't go looking for. Yeah, they're looking. But they're wonderful. Because what's under that skirt is none of my business. <laughs> okay? I have my own skirt to worry about. And I try to keep mine low, so I will not so go bothering. Do snakes in there? Yeah. Good. Yeah. 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 Florida. Yeah. Snakes, bats. Birds, all the good lizards, frogs, all grass, grass, all of it. Oh, grass. Grass. Oh, grass. Grass. If you grass. think you grass. don't have grass in Florida, oh, no. you are wrong. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and here's here's the other thing. If you That's why the snakes would show up. Yes. The snakes would show up and say, there is food in them, their yeah, tree. Yeah. And they will slither up there and they will attack a whole entire nest of rats. They will get fat and sassy and move on down the line right. and hang out and wait for another few days until the rats have repopulated the area. And then they will come back and do it all over again. Um, and this, this is one of the things that I want to encourage you all to impress not only upon yourselves but upon our clients. This is part of the joy of living in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. I have to tell a story. I, when I moved to Florida as a very young mother with two little ch children and we lived in this house that was built for veterans when they came home from from <laughs> WW2 and um, no air conditioning and louver air based apartments yeah. yeah. so gallon air based oh and outside my back door here was the the step here's the door there was a palm tree 
right there. And one night my brother and his wife came to see me and we talked and it was dark and they were leaving. We opened the door and this palm tree, the entire trunk of the palm tree was covered with palmetto bugs. Oh, Ooh. all Ooh. the Welcome way to Florida. around. Roaches. Well, well, they are roaches. Not the little ones. Oh, I've he, never seen that again. <laughs> oh, never too. But that was the most. I mean, every time I get together with my brother, we had to tell this story over oh again. Oh, my gosh. It roasts me out. The trunk was like this, oh, and the entire fire. trunk. And see, the, the, the in Florida. <laughs> look, that's amazing. You're like me. I tell the spiders and I tell the frogs that come into my house, this is my place. You're not going to run me. Like, none of you write a check for me at the end of the month. And, right, so this is, this is problematic. Now, my black racers, on the other hand, one of them got snippy with me the other day and I threw something at him. <laughs> I'm telling you, he was like, what are you doing out here? I was enjoying my time. And I was like, look here, dude, I own this whole entire place. Okay? Um, that's the first thing. And the second thing is, I'm not bothering you. Go ahead and get your tan on, buddy. <laughs> but don't be getting snippy with me because I will smack you. What does snippy look like? Snippy was him just, just posturing as if he was going to come over and bother me. First of all, you're too little. You're still I'm not scared of you. I'll put you in my back pocket and go on. Racers get big. Yes. No, but he's, he's my police. Like, he's my, he's my four-footer. He's been there for a while, right? But my thing with him was acting like I wasn't supposed to be out in my yard at the time when he was out there. He doesn't pay rent. Well, anyway, have you ever heard of that? Yes, the roaches palmetto the roaches. bugs will, will inundate the, the a, a very nice, cozy space. And the only suggestion, the only recommendation that I've given people since I've been here is invite a sand hill crane or two. Yes. They do a great job. I, I get a snake story. Yes. Okay, one. So we have a big snake that's lived in the house since we've been there. And so I saw him the other day. He was out front going across the thing, and your sister-in-law was sitting on my porch talking to her baby on the phone. And I said, tell him I just saw a black snake. So he wanted to see a black snake. I was like, oh, Liz, I'm really sorry. Look it up on Google. I can't find a black snake. So you know those ferns you left in the front of the house? Yeah. So I was picking him up to move him. I'm walking across. And doesn't he stick his head up, swirls around, and down. I said, Liza, show him quick. And so he, we, we had a snake for your nephew, just like that. <laughs> Popped up out of the out of the Boston Fern, I think. Oh, bless his heart! Wow. Came to visit Lyle. Wow. Okay. So, dropping of all leaf bases. Um. And they did intermittent. And see how this yeah, is. Yeah, intermittent. Now, if you don't like this, I mean, you can go ahead and assist it with with taking it down. Why? Y'all. I, I would hope that you would want to drink lemonade, spice or otherwise, on your back porch before you go out there and argue with those plants. Absolutely. You no, know, as far as I'm concerned, that is a free trellis for dragons. Absolutely. Oh. And 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 coral honeysuckle for those of you who don't care about what you eat, just go ahead and put you some coral honeysuckle on that thing, and it will be beautiful. I've done it before. Um, trunk erosion. This is also in typically older palms. Um, yeah. yeah. Because this is natural and it's just peeling off on its own, it is not a source of inoculum for anything else, okay? Scurf on young leaves, yeah, pygmy day palms especially. They're, they're, oh, yeah, you get that, you get that phone call. Yes, this, this is, I tell people that this is like pubescent on these leaves, okay? It's just a puberty thing, it's going to wear off. Um, translucent areas on sable palm leaves and stuff. Yeah. That is normal. That is very normal. It is also another sign of immaturity. Okay? And that's the end. Yay! Thank you all. That was great. Thank you for coming, Sandra, Lindsay, Bond, and everybody else. And all of you. I was there. I really appreciate it. Um, I'll call you. Have a great
Hey, one morning is a coffee cake. 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 Hey, one morning